good morning. Um, welcome by my presentation. Uh, before I click to the other slides, if you have any questions, please wait for the end because then I can continue on my uh, story. Uh, that's all for introduction. Um, then we go to the detail. In the slides, you see something like microservices. Are people fam familiar with that name or what does that mean? Okay, a few, okay. Are there any experts? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know, but then I need to know, okay, what, uh, what am I talking about? Okay. Um, in the background, you see another great place. It's another place in the Netherlands. It's Rotterdam, uh, where our headquarter of KPN is located. Um, so that's why I put it also here. Maybe a small introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Patrick de Vries, um, living in the Netherlands, uh, working for a company, KPN. Um, more about that, something, uh, some slides later. Um, doing a lot of years already working in the data uh, stuff, but my background is more about the mobile network, uh, what we doing there and how we use data in the mobile network. Not the data about what you're knowing about uh, internet, that's other stuff, but more the data that we are using to manage our network. So that's the OSS uh, part. Um, KPN. The company where I'm working for is KPN. And uh, one of the things where I really like about <laughs> KPN is uh, something what we really believe is <laughs> KPN really believes in that we need to make communication for everybody available anywhere, anytime. When you need it, it should be there. Uh, so complete freedom. And of course, that means a lot uh, that you need to do something about your infrastructure. You need to manage that. Uh, and that's also one of the use cases what I would like to discuss with you today. Um, but also, did you know that um, it's also something that I'm very proud of to work for KPN, is that we are one of the, uh, let's say, greenest operator in the world. Uh, about green energy stuff. Everything what we do is also thinking about how can we reduce the energy that we are consuming. And in 2017, we were number one. I don't know in 2018 what the number was. I could not find it. So I think it was not number one, but <laughs> we won the prize in uh, 2017. That's all about me. That's all about KPN. Uh, let's go to the details into the use case. Um, within KPM, we are already using the data platform, I think, four or five years. And we started to journey about, okay, we have a problem, how can we solve it, how can we detect it? And that's also about this use case that I would like to use today, and what's our journey to go to more microservice architecture. Um, the problem is that, um, as a customer, you are using a service. Uh, to deliver the service, we have a copper line in the ground that's going to our data center. Um, if there's something happening with the copper line, then the question is, can we detect? That's the high level uh, use case. Copper, it's a very old technique, so there is no active monitoring on it. So we have to do it on another way. We have to use data to flow to the system. Can we monitor? what's happening by the customer. Um, in the old way, that's still on the slide current situation, but that was when we started four years ago. It was, we are not able to detect. So always when there was something wrong, the customer needs to call the help desk. Okay, I have a problem. We are sending a lot of engineers to the customers to find out exactly where it is. It will take a lot of time, and then we are able to solve. The situation is right now is that we collect the data, we build a data model on top of it, uh, and we are able to find out where the problem is. That's where we are uh, right now in the journey, and also in the journey are we able to solve it automatically. What does that mean? It's nice to detect, but I always say then it ends in a report, but can you move your data into your internal process? 
so that you finally do a reset or inform the end-to-end -end customer. How are we going to, to do that story? First of all, if you want to do this, there are always two components to use in data. One is process and the other one is system. You need them both to be successful. So you could buy a great system, uh, but if you don't know the process, how people are working into your organization, that you are using the data, you're also not able to create your actionable insights into production. The other way around, it's nice to have great process descriptions uh, available, but if you don't have the right platform, then yeah, it's, it's also not possible. Let's start with the first one, process part. Um, it's a little bit a um, high-level picture. I think everybody who is doing something with incident management recognize uh, something about this. Um, on top, it was the old, where we are uh, in the past. Something was happening in an event, happened, and then after a couple of times, we detect, okay, there is an issue. We started with the customer complaining. Okay, there is an issue. Then we create a ticket for the department, need to solve it. They solved it. And then if there is something else, they do it, if they need to do a recovery or a restore, they do it, problem solved. And yeah, it's IT, so we wait for the next incident. Okay, the time between detecting and solving was a long time. So we said first, can we make that sm time uh, smaller? So we are using the platform, build the data models on top of it, and right now uh, we went back, let's say from two days, in that case, to less than an hour to find out, okay, that customer has an, has an issue with the platform. If you know um, that the customer has an issue, you also can automate where the customer has the issue, so you are able to solve it much quicker. Then the last case, and that's in the journey where we are right now, is, okay, are we able to use detect before the problem occurs? Um, that's in the journey where we are standing right now, but I can tell you something about the architecture, how we went to this journey. How did we start? Um, on this way. Um, KPN Network delivers the files. Uh, we are using component NiFi uh, to store the data. We build an UCI process. And what the UCI process did was just collecting a huge set of data, process it, create a new table. Uh, with the data, we know which components were down. We also did a verification, okay, if you know that a component is down, but is the engineer already on work, then you have to do nothing because you already know the root cause, an engineer is uh, the reason why the component is down. So we built all those logic just in Hive, simple SQL queries. Uh, if we know that the copper line is down between the data center and the customer, we don't know where it is down. Could be the data center, could be somewhere in the ground, could be by the customer. So we add, we build an API by using of NiFi to trace, okay, can we find out exactly where the problem is? And in that case, we know, okay, which customer, where is exactly the problem uh, located, and what's the best next action? We put Kafka on top of it to just send a message to another system, and that system can do three things. Uh, one, it can create a ticket so that an engineer will go to the customer to replace, for example, the modem, if the modem has a failure. Second thing is, uh, if we know that's in the data center, uh, what's always the, the engineer doing from a data center, the first step is always a restart. Yeah, why are we not triggering the restart? And the middle one, communication, it's all about, if you know from customer experience that you don't have uh, a right uh, network that's working, why do you not inform by an SMS the customer? And that you know not working and that you are working on it. So also communication is something that we put here in, uh, in the flow. It was nice, but um, we found some problems in this way of thinking. One of the first problem was that uh, the ingest side, 
we need to wait for 70% of all data because the model was based on the complete batch of all data. It's nice, but that will take time. So first you need to collect 70% and then you can run uh, your model. Um, that means that the flow will take more than 50 minutes. No, that was not uh, really nice. For the first step, it was really nice. Eh? So we went from two days to something like 50 minutes. So that was already a huge step. Uh, but what you find out if you are within 50 minutes, there is also maybe an alarm or something else triggered to our operating center. And they're already doing also the job. So you do something like an automatic production manager and the NOC are doing the same job. So that was not really working. So the engineer already solved the problem before we detected in the data. All those blocks uh, needs to be monitored. So we had difficulty in, okay, what's happening if something's failure in your, in your chain? Because it was all linked together. And the last one, if you want to make a change in your model, it will take us more than three months. Why? You put all complexity in one item. That's why. Uh, it will take you a lot of time. And if you want to make changes, want to make more like a scrum team, you want to drive quicker. So we need to change this model. So we built something great. Um, yeah, it's, it's the same like this. It's great, but uh, it said that it's over, what is it? I think seven years or three years, it's finished. Uh, and I was here last week and I saw that one of the towers, they're already rebuilding it because it was already too old. Um, so we had to change about the way of thinking, the way of working uh, with the components that we have. Uh, one of the first things is that we conclude is what went wrong. Um, Conway's law. Does somebody know this one? Or if you're doing things with multiple organizations, uh, in our also internal organization, every organization wants to have its own system. Every organization wants to do it by themselves. Uh, that means that you already, your organization is, is uh, or the IT is not the complexity, your organization is the complexity. So you need to manage that one. That was the first one that we find out and that we yeah, need to find a solution for it. Second one, Brooks Law. Um, if you want to do things with organizations, you add more people to your team. More people to your team is also more complexity. Because everybody has a nice ID and everybody uh, wants to add something. So how more people you are adding to your team with the end-to-end -end flow, uh, how more complexity you introduce. Uh, so we also said, okay, that's also something that you need to change. And then we went, okay, how are we doing that? Yeah, just using something like containers. Also with containers, it's easy to build and you can build great things uh, on that way. So we started that journey thinking, okay, how can we, can we do that? And for that one, we use four basics. I go very fast to my slides, uh, I see. Um, the first basics um, for work with this. The first one, what we said, it should be elastic. What does that mean? If you need capacity, uh, how do we scale up? How do we make sure that there is enough uh, capacity uh, available there? On the other side, we want to go to an architecture that says, okay, if there is a failure, how can we solve it as quick as possible? Also with the architecture. Why? If you just look at the use case, is uh, in the data flow, you really see that the system, your data flow is really changing or removing the people that are doing operations. So if the flow, end-to-end -end flow is not working well, yeah, then you have also an operational issue uh, because new customer will complain the help desk. So if something is not working, can you quickly uh, resolve it? Um, so you need to use something with blocks and they need to communicate. That's the most important keyword uh, here and they need to communicate fast. 
responsive. How are you doing that? Yeah, that's maybe another keyword that you see often right now. It's message driven. So we are using high level those four blocks in the architecture uh, within KPN. Another stuff that we need to change is what I said before is we built all code in one huge block. And it's working. It was great. We built something very great. It took us three years to build. It's running. Uh, but what I said before, if we want to make changes, it will cost us time. Uh, we are not able to spin up a second stuff behind the first one. So release management, DevOps, is very hard to manage. So you need to go to, at the end, uh, what they called a microservice architecture. Uh, so from a big unit, go to a something like a service oriented that you split already the blocks. And then the last journey is really that part also split to microservices. If you're using the microservices architecture and the event uh, uh, architecture, um, there are high level, uh, I think, three ways to do that. Four I have in my presentation. Um, but we're looking only at three. The first one, and then I think that's a really common used uh, way of communication and managing this. We put an orchestrator in between. Uh, sometimes people are also calling the orchestrator something like a business process manager uh, tool in between. So every step that you want to do is first go to A, then go to B, then go to C. That's what you're describing in the orchestrator. By API, you can call them, uh, get the response, tap back. Uh, it's very nice to do it on this way uh, because it's structured. It's very easy to build uh, in the way of thinking also within the team. Uh, but sometimes it's not working. Why? If the orchestrator is down, your process is down. Why, if a process A, B, or C is down, your complete chain is down. So you did not de decouple your architecture. So the question is, can I decouple it? That's also possible. Uh, we, bus, we put something like a bus uh, there. Within KPM, we use Kafka, uh, but you can also use uh, tools like Message IQ or something like that uh, in, uh, in between. But the most important thing is that you publish something into the bus and that subscribers just look at the bus. If the message is for me, they pick it up. So there is no dependency anymore between a service A, a service B, or a service C. It's nice, uh, but there is also for this one a uh, but. Um, it's a new way of thinking. You need really to decouple everything in your architecture, your data flow. If you just look at the current data engineers, the architects, it's a mind shift change. So uh, you need to help them to go to this, uh, this journey. That's for me, I think, uh, the most important one uh, uh, that you need to take off uh, of this architecture. Um, it's nice to go this to this architecture, but how do you integrate it with your current IT stack, because that's always the case, uh, what we do also within KPN. In the previous slide, I said, okay, uh, KPN is a company uh, that is very old. We are already 130 years old. So if you just call a supplier with a database or IT, I think somewhere in our data center we have it. Um, so you need to integrate. And the only way to integrate is just to look at those two models and can we combine it at this moment? And that's also a possibility. So you can combine uh, the event bus architecture uh, with the business uh, process uh, management architecture just to go to a hybrid um, solution. Also what you see here is that we have benefits uh, there. Uh, Nice to have the event bus in between, so you can decouple really uh, your stuff. And it's also nice to see that you use your orchestrator uh, in there to manage your data flow. Within KPN right now, we choose for uh, 
the one with the orchestrator on the right uh, to manage the, the flow. And I think at the end we also want to decouple the orchestrator layer. But we need to go to the journey because it has to fit on your current architecture. That's the most important thing. The bus, uh, for the bus, what I said before, we are already using Kafka. Kafka is already a nice tool to work on. Uh, you can publish, you can create your topics, and uh, people can subscribe on those, uh, those topics. I will not continue into the session totally into Kafka. I think there are much better sessions if you want to follow uh, <laughs> stuff on Kafka. Uh, just checking, are the people using Kafka? Or yeah, I think what I believe as an architect, this is really a common tool where you have to look at. If you want to communicate with other systems, uh, something like Kafka yeah, should be in, uh, in between. Then I add a slide about microservices. Um, what's really the difference between a microservices architecture um, and something about what you said, the service-oriented uh, architecture? The keyword is can you decouple your stuff? That means that uh, if you decouple stuff, you can put it into your organization also with your own different scrum teams. So on functionality, you can decouple. Uh, one of the examples that you read a lot is, for example, an, uh, a website. And a website you're doing ordering. Ordering, let's say, for example, a video. How can you decouple your flow? So something about the website could be one. Content could be one. But also you're creating your bill, your invoice. is a different service. So can you not build one program, but decouple them, maybe in three, four, or five different programs. You can put those different into your organization, so every organization has their own responsibility, and they can do their own stuff. That means that there is no decision about code. If they want to use, let's say, Python, Hive, I don't care. The team is responsible for that function. That means the hard complexity, what I said before, your organization try to communicate. You can also decouple that one. The only thing that you need to talk about was about the Kafka, the interface. Are we talking the right interface? If that's true, then you can do it all by yourself. That also means a shift about data. If they need a data store, yeah, just have their own MongoDB. I don't care if they want to have Elastic or they want to have something like a Hadoop stack there. They can do it by themselves but they need to manage it also by themselves. So really, can you decouple it to just services functions? That's really the keyword. What's really the benefit of it? If you can decouple it, you can do also much easier release management of that only function because they have only the API where they need to look at. But if they want to change, they can spin up, for example, in the cloud by Docker, a second one, test it and change it. So it's easy one also for them to do release management and do innovation. But it means something, it's a mindset change. So you are not responsible for your own chain, no, only the small pieces. But you can, that small pieces can make that a really great product. I already announced before, if you want to communicate with the diff different microservices, you need to have the right language. Um, at KPN, uh, we are looking really at the TM form, or we introduced the API of the TM form uh, for that one. The TM form is an open form that's really used by a lot of telcos, uh, and they are introduced a couple of years ago, the open API uh, there. And what we said within KPN, okay, we use that open API standard to communicate with. So, I just put the link um, there, but this is where you can find more information about that uh, open API. That's not the only one. If you just look at the internet, if you're doing web, for example, I know also for web there are different uh, standards already available, APIs available for that one. So if you want to go this direction, choose something that's already defined. Why? You need to integrate somehow, and there is already a definition, then also your integration is much easier into your organization or your current IT stack. How 
how does that look like? Uh, at the left, um, that's the API or the communication that we use. It's an Afro, just a uh, message that we build up uh, with a format. Uh, just look, the right definitions. How does it look like? Uh, how do we fill it in? Uh, not a really complex schema. At the right, you see the topic, okay? We still need at KPN that orchestration part. And that's a flow that I put in the right. So, um, if we had the use case before, we receive data, we build a model, uh, and at the end we know where the problem is. We need to do something with creating tickets to the engineer. How do we do communication? How do we do a reset? That last part is something that we still use the business process management uh, for. How do we do that? Um, we get the trigger. We use Kafka for that one. The trigger went to our orchestration layer. And in the, orchestra or in the orchestrator, uh, there is this really a flow. If A arrives, then we know we need to create a ticket. So the orchestrator creates just the format, put it back to the Kafka bus, and we have another system. It's internal, it's called service car. That's listening to that application, create the tickets, and send the information back. I create a ticket, and this is your ticket ID. So at the end, in our data store, we have a relation, okay, this is what we did, this is the ticket ID that's already created. If they close the ticket, we get the information back. Uh, if they send a uh, reset, uh, then we also get the information back from the system that's doing the reset. If it fails, we also want to know in our process. So we are communicating on this way uh, to all the systems within KPN. So an orchestrator in between still using uh, the Kafka component. Another, I think, great component is here. It's the schema register. Why? You want to decouple your architecture. If you want to decouple, you also want to ch make changes in those API. Maybe in the next release, there's a new field coming in. Uh, do you want no dependency with the other system? For that one, you can use the schema register. So make sure that if you're doing an update, you're sending not one message, but a message version one, a message version two. So the system that reads can choose for its own message. Only thing, can you deep couple your architecture? So if I go back in the slide that I showed before, how did we do that as high as possible? Of course, still we got the data. Of course, we still use NiFi to collect the data. But we already make there in NiFi the first change. We said we don't wait for the batch. No, if data arrives, a single record be processed directly. That's the first change, what we did. Second step is that we put Spark in between, Spark Streaming. So if the data arrives in Spark Streaming, we can directly process it. Uh, of course, we want to build an archive. That's why we introduce HBase in place here. But for the next step, we build a model, it's there, we publish it directly on Kafka. The, the other component, NiFi again, where we built already the API, we did not make any changes of it. So we still can reuse that API, but right now the API is not listening to something that's happening on the ATF, but just on a Kafka message. It's triggered, sending the information back. At that moment, we introduce a new Spark job or just, okay, what's the ne next best action that we need to do? If that one is clear, we said, okay, create that action to the Kafka. And what I showed before, the, the service card topic, there on top of it, we'll pick up the message, we'll read it, and we'll do uh, the action. Is this one big chain? Uh, no, is it already a complete microservice architecture? Okay, you can start the discussion with it. But what is already is nice about this architecture is we built not one Spark job or one big Hive query, nay, we built different jobs. So for example, if the second Spark job needs to have more capacity <coughs> and we want to do it in the cloud, we directly can move that part of piece to an external cloud or do it in our internal cloud. We can move components where they are and what we need. And that's what uh, this in architecture, what I believe, make, make it great. 
you can really decouple stuff uh, and we can go faster within the innovation. How does that look like in more detail? Some flows. Uh, we receive data as a SOAP message uh, from NIFI, put it in Kafka. Spark is reading the Kafka topic, uh, writes the data back to the H base. Then we introduce a second job also in Spark that's reading uh, the stuff from Kafka. Then we're using uh, NIFI in that case for the API to trigger it to an external system to detect, okay, is the problem within home? Is the problem on the ground of is in our data center? If that information is back, we use Spark again to find out, okay, this could be the right solution. And I found out yesterday that we have three lines, but at the end it's only one line with maybe some communication back. Okay, we use that one to go to the orchestrator that's listening and doing the right action. That's nice, but we want to go further. We want to go to machine learning. Um, if I talk about machine learning also within my organization, it's yeah, uh, an hype or a keyword because yeah, everybody is already doing it. I really believe there are that there are three levels of machine learning. Um, the first one is just AI. Uh, that's already what we're doing for a long time. You just build your algorithms. The second one is more from machine learning, uh, that you build your algorithms, but still on a fixed model. Every time you're changing your model. So that changing your model is a batch process. For example, every day you do a learning, put your new mo model there in place. And the last one, deep learning is always what I tell, okay, the model can learn by himself. Uh, that's the last part also in our journey where we want to go to is can we use deep learning tools to change the model and if that one is available are we able to uh, know already that there could be a problem within an hour by the customer or next 24 hours. So are we able to predict? That's the journey where we are right now within KPN in this use case. What does that mean in your architecture? Yeah, you decoupled everything. So if you want to change something, yeah, you just can put it in. It's very easy to build. It's, uh, I don't know if it is something like a Lego infrastructure, but that's where we want to go to. You can replace stuff, build stuff, create new blocks in it. With the end goal, are we able to detect before problems already occur? So, um, I take you today to a little bit of our journey, what we did to go to a really big silo about data, a big silo about all everything in one process. Uh, the learnings about what we did, eh? it's, it's nice to build, you build something great, it's also working. Our business was very happy that it was working, but it will take us a lot of ops time to develop. So we said, no, we need to change. That's why we, decoupled everything that we said, if we need infrastructure, can we have it already available? For me, it does not care where it is. Do we need cloud? Then it is in the cloud. But if you decouple everything, you can mu much easier make the change. So it's not only making data available for your customers, but also making it possible in these kind of architectures that you can say to your customers, okay, it's much easier to develop. It's also much easier to say to your customer, you can do it next time by yourself because you decoupled functions. So that also fits into the organization. I see that I have something like 10 minutes left. <coughs> so do you have any questions for me or something that was not clear? So, so, sorry, uh, <laughs> maybe you can go to the mic. <laughs> yep. Thank you for the wonderful session. Uh, 
My question, actually I have three questions, but maybe we start with the first one. So what was the, uh, um, the container orchestration platform that was used? We have internal uh, within KPN, uh, our own uh, um, yeah, cloud. And on the cloud, Kubernetes is uh, running on it. Okay. So that's why, th that's the platform uh, that we used. Okay. The second question was about uh, the elasticity of the different components that was used. So do we have auto scaling enabled on Kafka and Spark streaming job also? Like you have containers and how do we yeah. make it flexible? Not yet, but that's okay. part of the roadmap. That's that's all, yeah. thank you. Other questions? What we did also with that one is uh, a simple component from uh, Red Hat, JBoss, in place, and it's just a different system. Oh. And that component can communicate directly to Kafka. Yes? Sorry, I do not really understand your question. Yeah. The, the, what, what you, the, the question is, is there any dependencies? When do you split from A to B? Th that's, uh, or when do you decouple? Uh, what we try to do as a vision can we decouple as much as possible? Okay. But okay. it's not always possible. Okay. Uh, but also for provisioning, the question is, uh, um, why are you not decoupling it? So if you order something, um, why directly set not the order and doing, let's say, all the next steps in parallel? Of course, you need to monitor that everything uh, is done, but we, think most of all, okay, if you order something, first you need to know is it in stock. Second step is maybe uh, to make sure, uh, okay, where it is in stock. Is there ever enough amount or something for that customer there? So you need to put in your current process different steps before you know you can end it. What does it mean if you just remove all those steps and do them in parallel? What could be go wrong? And that's to find out, can you manage that one? And that's the change about what I said uh, uh, from the architecture point of view. Are we able to do it and what's the risk? And if, the, if there is any risk that you say, okay, now for us, you need to check the balance and then you do maybe the next step, the ordering one. If there is really a relationship, yeah, then you need them both together. So then you need something like an orchestrator in between to check is first A and first B. But there is always a, a part of then complexity, what you will introduce in your architecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, ha we have the same problem because the, the problem why we are doing that is something about the architecture, what was when before, so the IT stack that we have already in place is not able to do it. So the only way to do it is using the orchestrator. But it's the point, do we want to do that? And what we said is now we want to decouple everything. But we are not there. And are we there over five years, 10 years? I really don't know. Um, Okay, last question. And if you have other questions, I will stay here at the door maybe for 10 minutes, then just come to me. Yeah, um, you use the same data that you store in your lake and HBase, 
that you use in microservice, do you use the same metadata management tools for both for microservices and for your lake? Yeah, we have Atlas. Atlas. Yeah. So we have an Hortonworks framework, and we use Atlas as the main top of it. But then you cannot track which services you which data with Atlas, because Atlas is only for the Hadoop stack only. Yeah, you can do that for part of your Hadoop stack, uh, but what we also do in the data flow is that we add several times tags on top of it, and we use those tags to know where it's going to. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you all for joining the session, and I hope that you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you.